not statistically significant. Those three words strike the fear in many scientists and analysts. Why do they panic on seeing those three words? If you are confused about the concept of statistical significance, you are far from the only one. In this video, I'll explain what it means to be not statistically significant. And along the way, we will cover important concepts such as A-B testing, sampling variability, and the signal-to-noise ratio. BuzzFeed recently reported that Instagram is experimenting with hiding the likes counter from users of the social media platform. Now, the influencer industry may be worried that hiding the like count depresses the usage of the platform, which can be measured by the total number of minutes per day users spend on site. We set up an A-B test to determine the effect of hiding the like counter. Hypothetical A-B test, users of group A continued to see the likes count while users of group B were not shown the number. We ran the test for a week on 5% of the users of the platform, after which we measured the average time spent on Instagram per day. Let's say users in group A spent 54 minutes on average, and users in group B clocked in at 53 minutes. So group B underperformed group A by one minute per day. The statisticians reported that the difference between group A and group B in terms of total time spent on site, you guessed it, is not statistically significant. A different way of saying the same thing is that it's a statistical tie, that showing or hiding the likes count does not make a difference. What is a statistical tie? Why are the statisticians not happy with the result of one minute per day? Think about the one minute a day difference due to the likes counter. That difference comes from the users that took part in the A-B test. Recall that Instagram selected 5% of the users to participate in the test. What if a different 5% were selected for the test? What if the test were conducted on a different week with a different 5% of users? We would not expect to see the same one, one minute difference because the actual users participating in the test would have been different. Wait a minute, people would say. The selection is random, and a random selection should guarantee that the two groups are identical. So shouldn't we see the same 1% difference if we were to run a clone of the test? When statisticians say two things are identical, what we mean is statistically the same. If randomly selected, the two groups would share the same average metrics. For example, if the uh, test population in one week consists of 45% women, then the sample for the next week should also consist of 45% women. However, the individuals inside these samples will be different, will vary from week to week. So we cannot expect to see exactly the same result twice. Such variability is known as sampling variability. Each sample is a set of users. A sample randomly selected will contain different users from another sample randomly selected. Another way of stating this question is how much of that one minute per day difference is due to the sampling variability between different sets of users? And how much of that difference is due to showing or not showing the likes counter? We can also use the language of signal and noise. 
the effect of showing or hiding the lights counter is the signal that we want to measure. The sampling variability between different sets of users is the noise that's polluting our <laughs> Friday night at a busy restaurant, your friend is trying to tell you something and that's the signal. All the chatter from other diners in the noisy restaurant is the ambient noise that is obstructing you from getting that signal. Your friend must speak louder than the ambient noise in order to be heard. In our A-B test, the effect of showing or hiding the lights counter must override the background noise coming from that sample to sample variability that is preventing us from detecting the signal. We need the signal to noise ratio to be high. The signal to noise ratio is the essence of the Z test or the T test, which are the basic tools for analyzing AB tests. A key step in doing this analysis is to take the one minute per day difference and divide it by the standard error. The one minute per day difference is the signal and the standard error sizes up the noise. Dividing gets us the signal to noise ratio. If the signal to noise ratio is high, we say that the difference is statistically significant. And if the ratio is low, we say the difference is not significant. For example, the standard error may be three minutes per day. Dividing one minute per day difference by three gets us 0.33, which is the signal to noise ratio. Because this ratio is smaller than two, roughly speaking, um, we conclude that the difference is not statistically significant. Not statistically significant. Those are not the three words we wanted to hear when we ran the A-B test. In our test, we wanted to learn the effect of hiding the likes counter on time spent on Instagram. The amount of time people spend on Instagram varies from user to user independent of whether we show them uh, the like count or not. That's the background noise. And in the test, the noise overwhelmed our signal. The one minute per day difference was not strong enough. Sometimes the restaurant noise drowns out our conversation. At other times, we are just too soft-spoken to be heard. In either case, we can't hear each other inside that restaurant. When something is not statistically significant, the signal we're trying to measure is not loud enough. It's as if we can't hear each other inside a busy restaurant. If you like this video, share it with your friends and hit that subscribe button. Comment below to suggest topics for a future video. Principal Analytics Prep. Prepping you for the data revolution.